Hello everybody, Realm Builder Guy here, and welcome back to the channel. And some really, really exciting Imperator Rome news today. Imperator Rome has been saved. And saved like we had previously surmised that the modding community would step up, and the modding community has stepped up. And of course, I am talking about the just newly released Imperator Invictus. This is a flavor mod, overhaul mod that has so much, adds so much depth and historical accuracy and immersion to this great game of Imperator Rome. And the team around Imperator Invictus were kind enough to send me a pre-build. Uh, so let's call it an alpha or beta, not quite sure, of the mod itself before it released so I could kind of look around, mess around with it a little bit. So thank you very much there. In case you didn't know, the mod team lead there is Snowlet. Snowlet is the same person that revived the Bronze Age mod. So 2.0 or Bronze Age mod reborn here for Imperator Rome, of which of course I am currently doing a playthrough series, a short one, but still a playthrough series with uh, Crete, or the Sea People as I'm calling it. Obviously Sea People aren't actually in the game yet, but kind of trying to recreate that a little bit, so check that out. Now Imperator Rome, of course, as we all know, I did a video talking about it's over and done. I've also done a video saying it's the best PDX game. So what is it? Well, it's still the best PDX game right now, but we'll see what Victoria 3 brings. But we're talking Imperator Rome today. And over and done in terms of development, at least for 2021. Now, Paradox has a few times now over the course of the last few weeks reiterated their commitment to potentially returning back to Imperator Rome. They're always saying, you know, we're looking at coming back. Hopefully we can come back. Hopefully we can put more. Well, hopefully is here through the modding community and much like the modding community in Total War, thinking about Total War Rome 2, Davida at Impera mod, which just takes that game to a whole new level. And yes, of course, I did a review about that mod and the game here on the channel. This, this Imperator Invictus team, they have come out with a slew of additions to the game. And they've already said they are working on more content moving forward. So this will continue to be developed. And the beauty for these modders is, of course, they know that at least for the year 2021, they can work on this mod and the game isn't going to change. You know, unlike some other games like Crusader Kings 3, one of the best examples where it will constantly still be evolving and changing, they know they've got six months at least, if not longer, or maybe forever, where the base game will not change. So what is Imperator Invictus? Well, it combines some of the best mods into one great work overhaul mod. Um, now, you don't need to subscribe to a whole bunch of mods because there are a ton of mods included here. In fact, I reviewed a few of these on their own a couple of months ago, and now it's all in one place and you really don't need another mod. Included here are the mods. Two Spartans, Bloodlines, Commander Kings, Great Wonders Refined, Hibernia Invicta, partially, Iberian Flavor, Interesting Histories, Interesting Treasures, Legacy of Menander, Rosetta, Cell Provinces, The Forgotten, Unofficial Patch, Diadochi Flavor Patch, Pack, The Gray Neutrals Units, Clear Speed Indicator, Mundus Poenicus, at least partially, and enhance cultural decisions. So there are a ton of key mods here in the game in this one overall mod. So just subscribe to this one mod. The, dis the link to Steam where you could get this mod is of course down in the description. So now let's get into it. So at first glance here, it looks like everything's the same at a very quick glance, but it's not. And I'll get into some of the map changes here in a minute. But the first thing I wanna talk about is the fact that they have added a lot of new heritages to the game. Uh, and one, I'm just gonna highlight, here's an example, if we go to Nepandia, we've got the Tamil heritage that gives you aggressive expansion impact plus 5%, fort defense plus 10%, and national commerce income plus 5%. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of new heritages across the game. I'm not gonna go into every single one. I will let you discover that. 
So next we're going to show some things that are very obvious. Now the first thing you'll notice right down here is uh, no more Egypt. Egypt no more. In fact, we've got the Ptolemaic Kingdom now sitting right here where Egypt was before. And why did they do that? Well, it differentiates between the Hellenic version of Egypt, and which obviously this was, the Ptolemaic Kingdom, and the formable Egypt. So now you can form that. What they had to do, of course, here in Nebatea was this black color, so they changed that to a dark blue just so you can see the differences there. They've also added changes or decisions that change some names, specifically here for the likes of Thrace, as well as Macedon or Macedon, depending on which way you want to go. So after, I believe it's about a year, the you, there's a decision in there. Thrace can be renamed the uh, Lysimachid Kingdom and Macedon renamed the Antipodes patrid kingdom to reflect the new ruling families there and that's a decision i guess you can make in the game if you would choose to change those names now one of the things you can see right here is new background art well this is something that they have added to the game as well let's go to the ptolemaic kingdom here um let's see there we go and you can see here a really nice background here of wherever they are. This is Ptolemaeus 1 Soter Lakit. And it is a dynamic background color system or background art system, as it were. These backgrounds you can see here as well. They will change depending on where someone is. So if this guy moves into a different province and somebody else moves into this province, that new background will then go to the new person. You can see here there are different backgrounds dependent on who we are looking at, which is really, really cool. So this dynamic background art just adds to the immersion of the game. Now they also added a lot of new deities that I'm in observer mode now, but a lot of new deities across the board for all different cultures and different religions and so on. If we now go to, you can see the cultural map mode is here. You can see all the different culture groups there. If we go to the religious ones, we can see the expansion of the religions. That really hasn't changed much, but what has changed are the deities and the deity icons that you have available. They've also added new treasures spread out throughout the map. I don't know where they all are. I didn't look them all up, but it's more, there's just more there for everybody to choose from. Now, as far as new content goes, they've actually expanded the content for Carthage. So now Carthage has reworked missions and decisions and so on. They've also reworked the decision tree for Macedon. So there are new decisions you can make there on the mission tree. Uh, there is also the Galatian or Galatian invasion now that can happen. Now there are certain, uh, and it's coming from up here. So there are certain things you have to do first, certain criteria, and then you can trigger that invasion to kind of replicate the invasion from these tribes here. They also added depth to Pannonia and Illyria and what I mean by that is they've reworked the map so you've got new provinces or better said new tribes all over this entire region giving it more depth and really making it a lot more interesting to play here and it's something that I might be looking at. They have also added new content for this region in particular for the smaller Greek republics that are here so not the Bosporan Kingdom. But if you would look at one of the other realms around here that is Hellenic and a Republic, well, like over here in Olbia, you ha now have a new mission tree for these smaller Greek Republics, specifically for this Black Sea region. So what this allows is for a taller play style because a lot of it will be focusing on internal investments. You also have new leagues that can be formed and new flag and artwork that goes with it. You have events that lead to finding the lost temple of Artemis in the Crimea, which is also really, really interesting. Now, one area that they've paid particular attention to is 
Iberia. And if we go down here, Tharsis is still a thing. Uh, and it is a key thing. They've reworked this entire region of Tordentia to give it more depth and more, I don't want to call it playability, more immersion, because this whole area is an area that I've always been really interested in playing, but I felt like it lacked in many, many ways. On top of that, Iberian cultures have been reworked, so if we go to the cultural map, you can see here, uh, Aquitania and Visconian have now been added to the... Um, to the cultures here in Iberia, and they've kind of reworked this a little bit just to give you more, I guess, more flair, so to speak, more immersion, and make this entire region, which was very important, really come to life. There are also new, um, what do I say, try new military traditions for Iberian and Celt Iberian. So, and again, the Iberian flavor mod is part of uh, Imperator Invictus. So this entire region has become really, really interesting to play in. Final little bit of flavor that was added. There are new mission tree now for Punic minor states. So it's not just about Carthage, but also some of the Punic minor states now have additional mission trees that make it more interesting and allow them to turn away from Carthage and develop their own story of Africa. Now, Imperator Invictus is not just about flavor and immersion. They've also changed certain mechanics to a degree. Now, I'm clicking on an aqueduct here in Rome because cities, well, they're very meta exploitable and the team around Imperator Invectus really wanted to work on changing that and making it a little harder to build the sprawling megalopolis all the time and really you know exploiting that so what they've done is they have actually for lack of a better term they have nerfed the aqueducts plus the city commerce income is now less so the city meta sprawl is less prevalent. So nerf as far as it's just not, you can't build a bunch of them in, in aqueducts. You know, it's not like a waterworks park here in Rome just to get all the benefits from it. So it makes it a little bit more challenging. On top of that, food has been reworked. So as I'm showing here, the province food here in Fundi. So they've added a seasonal food growth mechanic. So that means from December to March, you get a negative food modifier, but from June to September, you get a bonus food modifier. So that's actually, you know, realistic. It shows the winter versus summer growing seasons and how that impacted food. On top of that, there is higher food consumption from your pops, making food a more core mechanic. Because I'll be honest, the way I played it, you know, you get some grain, you create some food, and then you really don't ever have to think about it. Well, now you do. And especially there is a much higher consumption from nobles and citizens. So again, sprawling cities with a ton of nobles and citizens becomes a little more challenging because it will hurt your food consumption and your food production, which is realistic. The bigger the city, the more food can, gets consumed, especially from people who are wanting more food and more luxurious items. On top of that, there's been a rework to the finances as well. So we look here on the economy, you see all of these buttons down here. Now this is a certain rework of bankruptcy, which before if you would start losing money and you'd go into the negative, somebody would just, a benefactor would show up and give you money or you could just steal from nobles. Well, now you've got these buttons that as long as you fulfill certain criteria, you can always do this. So here we've got cut military supplies. So you can see that somebody can't be the ruler, somebody is a general, somebody has a legion, and loyalty is greater than 30. And you gain 24.5 uh, gold. You could do emergency tax, which gives you, uh, you know, if you have greater stability than 40, Carthage gains 24.5 gold. So then you could do strong arms. So stability needs to be there. There are all these criteria you have to meet and each one gives you a different financial bonus, but there are some negatives associated with it as well. This just adds a little bit more 
dynamism to the economy system in Imperator Rome. There have also been slight tweaks to assimilation. So now the greater the unrest, the greater penalty to assimilating cultures, which makes sense. Again, if you're conquering a bunch of land, you're trying to assimilate them. Huge amount of unrest makes it a lot harder to assimilate them. So instead, maybe you want to give them more rights rather than trying to assimilate them to your culture. Speaking of culture, there are also new cultural events for a number of cultures here. Let's go to our technology screen here. If we go to civic advances, uh, I'm trying to see if we can find a few here, but there have been new cultural advances. Either way, just believe me, uh, to a number of new cultures. Iberian, Celt-Iberian, Thracian, Dacian, Illyrian, West Levantine, Numidian, Egyptian, and Mesopotamian. Now they are working on more culture uh, inventions to be added over time, and those will of course be available then. On top of that, there's something now called tech spread, uh, which is something that is in the Bronze Age mod. So if you are playing as a tribe and you are trading with a civilized state, you get an event roughly every five years and you will gain some tech progress from them. So that makes sense. If you are a tribe that is, I, I don't know, trading a lot with Rome. Over time, you would expect that some of the technology that the Romans had would trickle through to you and just give you a little bit of advances so you can advance in your technology and your inventions. Then on top of that, the tribes also have new military bonuses. So they have higher army morale, manpower and manpower recovery speed to boot, which is, uh, as they said in the uh, in the dev diaries, is kind of uh, reflective of how the tribes fought at that time. So it gives them a little bit of a bonus. They didn't nerf, but they kind of scaled back the early power of tribes, but this gives them more longevity and more power long-term in the game if you're gonna stay tribal for a long period of time because you get more uh, military bonuses and that certain degree of tech spread. In general, I would say it is now a lot more interesting to play as a tribe, especially here in the area of Gaul, uh, the air area here of Lyria, Pannonia, and so on, uh, as well as, of course, Iberia um, right here. Uh, so playing as a tribe is something I'd be very, very interested in. So in my opinion, in my opinion, the most interesting things now to go for is either a new Carthage playthrough, given the rework there. Macedon, of course, they've added a lot of uh, new missions there and the rework the mission tree. But really, it's tribes. Um, I would say give it a go right in this area here of Iberia. It seems very interesting. Gaul, of course. Then here and see if you can create, recreate that invasion or trigger the invasion. And then, of course, a Greek minor state here in the Black Sea, given the rework to those mission trees. My opinion, those are some of the most interesting ones. But really, everything on the map is now in play also because of the new heritages and the dynamic background system. It's just, they've taken what 2.0 was for Imperator Rome and improved upon it. So in closing now, Imperator Invictus is something I highly recommend you check out. If you've been on the fence about Imperator Rome, now is the time to dive in. There's still a huge sale going on right now, so you can get the base game at a pretty good price, plus all the different DLCs. Um, and you can also check it out on my Nexus GG store, but Steam's probably a little cheaper right now, so maybe head over to Steam. Um, and you can then add the Imperator Invictus mod to it and give you a completely new feel to the game. Now, needless to say, I will be starting a new playthrough in Imperator Rome with Imperator Invictus here in the near future. I'm not going to do it as long as I'm still working on the Bronze, Ma uh, Bronze Mage, Bronze Age mod content uh, with the Sea People, but that's going to be a short series anyway because I just kind of wanted to test the Bronze Age mod. Uh, Snowlit, who is the head mod for the Bronze Age mod and the mod coordinator here for Imperator Invictus. 
also said, you know, there there's some cultural issues they're trying to work out with the Bronze Age mod. And there it was more, you know, we're going to play it and kind of see what it feels like. But Imperator Invectus is one I definitely want to do. Let me know down in the comments. What would you like to see me play as? And I will give you the following to choose from. So a tribe, Iberian, Illyrian, Pannonian, or Gaul, or a Greek minor state in the Black Sea area. Those are your choices. Put it down in the comments which one or rank all of them how you would like to see it down in the comments. So don't forget to hit that like button. Check it out. The Imperator Invictus mod is out right now. Link down in the description to the Steam page. Until next time, I am Realm Builder Guy, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.